Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your lesson in the fraction unit on adding and subtracting mixed numbers. So we've already added and subtracted fractions. Now we're going to take it a little further. Some more language, some more vocabulary to help us out with. Um, this process is common denominator, which we've talked about in the last lesson. It's a denominator that is the same in two or more fractions, so just being the same, common. Um, if you don't know the least common denominator because you need to get those to add and subtract fractions, then you can just multiply the denominators together. An improper fraction is when the numerator of a fraction has a greater value than the denominator. And I know you love my handwriting. So that, for example, would be if I had 7 out of 5. So my part on the top is more than my whole on the bottom. Okay? And those can be written, rewritten like we practiced. Um, saying 5 goes into 7 once with 2 of the 5 left over. So an improper fraction is then changed to a mixed number. Mixed meaning it's mixing whole numbers and parts of wholes together with that whole number in front and the fraction next to it. Here are some steps that are just going to help you along the way if you want to write them down. Um, some of you like to see it and have it make more sense that way first. Um, so you have to first rewrite fractions to have the common denominator before we can add and subtract. Then we're going to again add or subtract the numerators, keeping the denominator the same. Um, don't forget about the whole numbers and then simplify as usual. In this process, please remember to use estimation so that you can kind of check your answer for reasonableness. So I'm going to add mixed numbers. So I'm adding 7 and 4, seven, four, nine, seven and 4 ninths plus 10 and 2 ninths. So if I were to estimate, I would say 7 and 4 ninths is approximately 7 and a half, and 10 and 2 ninths is close to just 10. So my answer should be approximately 17 and a half. So to add them, some people like to line them up horizontally like that. For some of you, it might be helpful to line them up vertically. Because then you can see I need to add my numerator since I already have a common denominator. So when I get 6, keep my denominator the same as 9. Add my whole number, 7 and 10, for 17. To remember to simplify, so I'm going to bring this over here. I have 17 and 6 ninths. Well, 6 and 9 share a factor of 3. So this is the same as 17 and 2 thirds, which is close to my estimate, slightly more. So not too bad. Why don't you give these next ones a try if you're ready. Come back and check them. So 6 and 1 eighth plus 2 and 5 eighths. That's estimating 6 plus something closer to three, or two and a half. So I'm going to be approximately nine or a little less, maybe. So I do, I have a common denominator, so I'm fine to add. So I have six and one eighth plus two and five eighths. Add my numerators. So I have six out of eight, and I have six and two, which is eight. Simplify that shared factor of 2. So I get 8 and 3 fourths, which is close to 9, just a little under. 5 and 1 fifth and 2 and 3 tenths. We need a common denominator, so we're going to change the 1 fifth here by a factor of 2 to be 2 tenths. So I really have 5 and 2 tenths plus 2 and 3 tenths. So I'm going to add my numerators. I get 5 tenths. Add my whole numbers for 7. And I simplify for 7 and 1 half because they share a factor of 5. Over here estimating this is approximately 1 and a half or we could round up to 2. And this is approximately 4, so we should be a close, approximately 6. We need a common denominator, 
9, and 6. So I'm going to kind of keep my whole numbers over here for now. Looking at my fractions, I have 5 ninths and 1 sixth. I need to change them. Uh, least common denominator, maybe I don't know that exactly. I could multiply them together. Or I know for sure they both go into 18. Maybe that is the least common denominator, and you can do that. So then I go like this, change that one by 2, and this one by 3. So this becomes 10 eighteenths plus 3 eighteenths for a total of 13 eighteenths. Again, this is where it makes sense to be reasonable. We had 6 as our answer. So this doesn't make sense because it's less than 1, but that means that we have not forgotten about our whole numbers. 1 and 4 together is 5. So put that with our fraction for our mixed number. Now that you've practiced some addition, let's practice some subtraction. So again, let's estimate. Same rules are going to apply here. This number is close to 9. 2 and 1 third is close to 2, so we're going to get approximately 7. So I need a common denominator, so I maybe keep my whole numbers 8 and 5 6. We're taking away 2 and 1 third. We're going to change this. One to have a denominator of six. So I have eight and five six minus two and two six. So now that they're common denominators, I can subtract two from five, which is three, keeping my denominator, taking two from eight, which is six. So then I simplify, since these share a factor of three, and I get six and one half. Good estimate. Try these and then come back. So remember, the first thing you're looking for is I need a common denominator. So I have to change this one by multiplying this part of it by 2. So I get 5 and 8 tenths minus 1 and 3 tenths. You can use your estimating. So a number close to 6 minus 1, we're going to be around 5. Okay, a little bit less. So I subtract 3 from 8, which I get 5 tenths. I subtract 1 from 5, which I get 4. So I have 4 and 1 half. Notice how I'm getting used to knowing my equivalent fractions. This one I need to change to have a common denominator. So I'm really doing 13 and 7 eighths minus 9 and 6 eighths. I'm changing the way I write it because some of you are going to do that differently. 7 minus 6, my numerators, is 1 out of the 8. 9 taken away from 13 is 4, and that is already simplified. I need common denominators here. In this case, I have to change both of them because these are prime. So I'm going to change them to a least common denominator of 6, changing this by a factor of 2, and this one by 3. So I get 8 and 4 6 minus 2 and 3 6. Taking my numerators, taking my whole numbers. Ta da! A couple more to try if you're feeling ready. Um, now I'm not going to have you do all of them, but you can welcome to try these. And then we can check, check in with those in class. Okay, these ones, renaming mixed numbers so that you're able to subtract. It's really important that you take some good notes here and that you understand what to do. So, in proper fractions, again, the numerator is greater than the denominator, but we're able to rewrite those. So, we were able to rewrite them as mixed numbers. So, when we see this, what we see is we have a number close to 2 and a number we're taking away that if we also round as close to 2, we get 0. Well, we know we're not going to get 0 because this number is bigger than this number. So for sure we're going to have more. But what we see is that they have a common denominator, but I can't take 2 away from 1. So what you have to do is rewrite. So this whole number 2 can be represented as 1 and 3 thirds. Because this is 1 and this is 1. 1 and 1 is 2. So what you do is you take that whole number and write it as a mixed number 
and then you are able to take that numerator and add it on to that one. So this really becomes 1 and 4 thirds minus 1 and 2 thirds. So now I'm able to say, okay, I'm doing 4 minus 2, which is 2 out of the 3. 1 minus 1 is 0, so I just have 2 thirds. So it can be kind of tricky, so make sure you're trying these out. Same thing here, this 8 minus 3 and 3 fourths. Well, 8, need, I need to have a denominator of 4. So I could either write that as 32 over 4, and then I just simplify, but then I need a mixed number, so it's not really going to work. What I can do is say, well, 8 is the same as 7 plus 1, right? So I can write that 1, that, seven, that 8 can be written as 7 and 1 whole out of the 4 out of 4. So then I'm just writing 7 and 4 fourths, which is 8, minus 3 and 3 fourths. So remember to estimate 8, and then the number is approximately 4. We, if we round this up, so our answer should be around 4. So I can subtract my numerators, and I get 1. Subtract my whole numbers, and I get 4. So give these a try. All right, estimating number 11 minus number close to 3, we're going to be approximately 8. So my denominators are the same, but I can't take 3 from 2, so I have to borrow from here, regroup. So 11 becomes, this is 10 and 5 fifths. So I'm taking this 5 and this 2. So this number is equivalent to 10 and 7 fifths minus 2 and 3 fifths. See that I'm just rewriting to make it easier to work with. Subtract. Subtract. There's my answer. Here I need a common denominator as well. So this is a, could be the same as 5. We can change these to be 24s. Let's so multiply this one by 3. Multiply this one by 2. Over 3 and over 2, of course. So then I get 9... 24ths minus 4 and 22 24ths. Still, I need to regroup. So this 5 can become 4 and 24 24ths. So then I put that 24 and that 9 together. So this number is equivalent to 4 and 33 24ths minus 4 and 22 24ths. So now I'm actually able to subtract them. So I subtract, and I get 11 24ths. All right, last one here. Let's see how you did. Getting a little messy on my screen. So 7 is not a fraction, so we need to change it um, to 1. So we're going to change it to be a mixed number. So it's the same as 6 and 1. So we can write 1 as a fraction with a denominator of 2 as 2 over 2. So 6 and 2 over 2 is the same as 7. 6 and 1 is 7. So I'm going to subtract now. 2 minus 1 is 1. 6 minus 1 is 5. 5 and a half. Couple word problems for you and then you are on your way. Um, this one's already worked out for us so we're going to look at why it makes sense or who uses it. So this is an urban planner, and they're designing a skateboard park. So they're wondering what the length of the park and the parking lot combined would be. So this is their model. And so they have the length of the parking lot and the length of the park. And so if they're wondering combined, that would mean that they were adding. So they added them together. They didn't have common denominators, so they changed them to have a common denominator of six. Then they added the whole numbers together, as you can see, added the numerators together, and then combined that. So the total length of the park and the parking lot was 160 and 56 feet. So knowing that, using the language in the word problem, you can try. So Jermaine walked 1 and 5 eighths miles on Saturday and 2 and 1 half miles on Sunday. How many more miles did he walk on Sunday? So we're wondering how much more 
was Sunday, then Saturday. So this is a comparison, so we should be subtracting. So we're going to take Sunday minus Saturday, and it looks like we need a common denominator. So our least common multiple here is actually 8. So this one doesn't need to be changed at all. But this one we'd want to change by 4. So we have 2 and 4 eighths. Oh, we can't take 5 from 4, so we're going to need to regroup this 2 into a 1 and 1 whole and regroup those parts together. So this is the same as 1 and 12 eighths minus 1 and 5 eighths. 1 minus 1 is 0. 12 minus 5 is 7. So we walked 7 eighths of a mile longer on Sunday than he did on Saturday. Way to be active. So ladies and gentlemen, kind of a lot of information. So make sure that you're writing down questions, bringing them to class. A big battle with this lesson is staying organized. So try to be organized in your work. We won't all show it in the same way, but it's important that we show our work and keep it organized. See you soon.